Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is your you gonna watch the game tonight photo news fix this fix is brought to you by the super huge mega camera giveaway where i'm giving away up to four thousand and nine hundred and ninety nine dollars of my own money for one of you to spend at alan's camera now it's completely free to get entered all you need to do is head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2021 and follow the directions over there on the contest page. Like I said, it's completely free to get entered, but if you do purchase Fro Pack 1, 2, or 3 or already own them, you will score extra entries. Now, let's get to the fix. First up, Canon has put out an 8K VR demo video showing off the new 5.2 millimeter dual fisheye lens in action. Now, I didn't whip out a VR headset as I don't exactly have one at the moment, so for me, the video is kind of unimpressive. Use your imagination! But I can only imagine how much better it would be with a VR headset on. Duh. The cool thing about this lens is it will work on the R5 and give you a 180 degree field of view to work with. Now you will need to use special software from Canon, but if it stitches everything together perfectly and easily, they might have a big hit on their hands. The other major question is, how will creators like myself work this into our workflows? The majority of the world does not own VR headsets, so is it worth it to create content for people who can't fully enjoy it? There's a question mark there. Who typed a question mark? There's honestly only one market that I think this will work for, and that's churches. You know, for virtual sermons and all. Who am I kidding? We all know that the first market to embrace this is going to be the porn industry. Christy. I'm sure many of you will be keeping an eye out for when that is launched. You don't know that. <laughs> Next up, last week, Sony finally announced the A7 IV, and we put out a hands-on preview of that camera. But if you missed it, let me quickly run down the key specs and our findings. The A7 IV sports a brand new 33 megapixel BSI sensor, which is up from the 24 of the A7 III. The body design closely mimics the A1, A92, A7S3, and the A7R4, and feels very good in the hands. It will now sport the Bion's XR processor, which is the same that you find in the A1. You get the all new menus, an ISO range of 100 to 51,200, 759 autofocusing points covering 94% of the viewfinder, a 3.68 million dot EVF, a flip out, very angle, crappy, low quality touch panel, real time tracking IAF for stills and video, two cards slots, one SD, and one that takes CF Express or SD cards, which is still kind of weird. They didn't put two in there. Sony tells us you will get 10 frames per second stills with the mechanical and electronic shutters. But as I discovered, there's a caveat. You get those 10 frames per second only in compressed RAW. I got six frames per second in uncompressed RAW, which was kind of disappointing knowing that the Canon R6 gets 12 mechanical and 20 with the silent. In terms of video, you're getting full with 4K up to 30 frames per second, which is downsampled from 7K with no pixel binning. You can do 60 frames per second 4K, but with a super 35 crop, which seems to have pissed a bunch of people off, and 120 frames per second in 1080p. All of this will set you back $24.99, which is $500 more than the a7 III when it was launched three years ago. I've seen people complaining that it's not a big enough update for them to move from an a7 III. Here are the facts. If you're not a full-time working photographer, aka someone who makes a living with their camera, then sure, there's no question that the a7 III will be perfect for you for many years to come. But for those who are doing this for a living, the upgrade will be well worth it because you make money with your camera and you can afford to do the upgrades. And for people looking to get into the Sony mirrorless game, the a7 IV or a7 III for less will be a perfect entry point for them. Now, if you missed my hands-on preview, be sure to check that out after this fix. And Finally, Nikon's leaking more than an older person in a Depends commercial. Ah, uh, who needs them? This time around, it looks like Nikon India released a presentation video that showed a new lens, as well as some interesting specs. The lens is the 100 to 400 millimeter Z, which should be a pretty popular one. And the specs are that it will shoot 8K 60P, have the world's fastest scan rate, which I hope they can actually prove, shoot 20 frames per second raw with continuous shooting, and 
feature a mode for shooting 120 frames per second when it comes to stills. Now I can only imagine how small those files are gonna be to allow you to get 120 frames per second. Nonetheless, these specs sound pretty good so far. Now last week after Fix went live, Nikon launched their third teaser trailer, this time focusing on, well, what I said they would. Focus! Focus! Uh, focusing. After the clip went live, Nikon shooters were all celebrating some sort of victory! or telling me I was somehow proven wrong, when in fact, if the AF is as good as Nikon shows in that video, then I would be proven right. What are you talking about? Just think about it. And if you can't figure it out for yourself, you're probably a Nikon fan person. <laughs> Ooh, why does he hate, I don't hate Nikon. <laughs> My first thought when seeing the teaser was, there's no way that's a real EVF recording. It's way, way, way too perfect. Now I reached out to Nikon who did confirm that the focus points in the teaser were digitally added after, but based on data pulled from the EVF. Now, if it turns out to be that perfect in the real world, which I highly doubt, it could be some of the fastest AF we've ever seen. OMG. Now to be fair, Nikon isn't the only one who's ever done this. Look at this clip from Sony for the A1. In my opinion, it's just too smooth and too perfect to be real. And this clip from the ZV-E10, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a lot fake. It's not even a little fake. It says a little fake. No, it's a lot fake. I mean, because does that text move when you're looking through the viewfinder? I guess not. And don't think I forgot about you, Canon. Here's your R3 demo clips. Oh, well, well those look real, actually. Oh. And they're spectacular. The moral of the story is, I hope that the Z9's autofocus is as perfect as those renderings showed. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.